Recently, Marquez Brownlee, who is one of the most famous tech YouTubers on this platform, did a little iPhone review. And in that iPhone review, he talked about a product that he's been developing. And a lot of people didn't like how it was presented and people are judging the actual quality of the product they're getting, especially the fact that they're having to pay for it. And the reason I think it's really important for creators to understand what is going on is because people getting called out, creators basically having criticism, you know, people judging their products and leaving negative comments has been a thing on YouTube literally from the very beginning yes. of YouTube. You know, my wife and I, we started on, in, on YouTube in 2008. And I remember we didn't monetize for a good two years. And we're talking about AdSense because when you first got mm -hmm. um, into the AdSense program, you had to apply and then if you got denied, you have to wait six months. My wife got denied three times. So for two years, we didn't monetize. And when we finally got ads on our YouTube channels, believe it or not, people called that out. So they're like, oh my gosh, you're giving me all this free content for all these years. And now you're finally getting paid. Oh, I don't want to watch your videos. Now, of course, that's a little bit exaggerated, but it was the way it was in the very beginning. And then eventually it happened with sponsorships. You know, we started doing brand deals and people didn't like that. So what's interesting is viewers, when they're watching this content for free on YouTube, they're just comfortable with the way things are and they don't want change. So when it comes to monetization, it doesn't matter what kind of monetization, there's always gonna be a group of people that are gonna call you out. And I bring it up because a lot of people forget that. They just assume, hey, because I'm doing all this work, I'm giving away so much value that people will support me. And that's actually the case for the majority of your fans, people that subscribe to you, that really appreciate what you do, but there's always a camp of people that have to say something <laughs> yeah but with marquez brownlee he's a very unique case and why this whole issue is blowing up in his face that's what i want to talk about and then secondly what you as a creator should consider when launching your own product or doing any kind of monetization on this platform but the quick takeaway is this always expect there's gonna be people that don't like the fact that you're trying to make money off the, the quality work you're doing on YouTube or any platform. And it's always been like that and it's always gonna be like that. And there's a lot of things you wanna to consider to be able to navigate that to lower the amount of pushback you're going to get. But tell me more about Marquez because <laughs> yeah. Austin is a fan. I, I am a fan. I'm a fellow creator. Um, I don't know him as a friend. I've met him one time. I um, really respect what he does. Yes. And of course, kind of look up to what he's accomplished. But uh, I'm looking at it from the outside in. And of course, my takeaway is for you as a creator. Um, Austin has his own unique uh, takeaways and perspectives because he's an actual fan of Marquez. Yeah, I mean, I've been watching Marquez for, I don't even remember how long, for at least a decade now, honestly. And that's kind of the amazing thing. And, uh, you know, like we've talked about in the past, I started a tech YouTube channel this year. And so I've been really, really on it for the entire year, focusing in on things. And of course, you talk about you looking up to Marquez. I mean, I, I look up to Marquez like he's a god, basically, yeah, right? Yeah. What he does on the platform, he is number one. And so you kind of have to see, if you want to be part of the game, you have to see what he's doing and learn from what he's, he's up to. And that's why I'm excited about the topic today. This story stretches back at least to the beginning of the year. And actually, you told me about a tweet that makes it even stretch back even further, maybe back to like 2016 but I think it's best to start the story at the beginning of the year. In about April, there was this big sort of tech season of these new products that were being released around AI. This company named Humane uh, had a bunch of old Apple executives and engineers. They put together this little tiny pen, not, not too dissimilar from this little microphone I'm wearing. And it was supposed to be like a little bit of like an AI assistant that you wore around with you. Marquez reviewed it and he called it the worst product he had ever reviewed. And it started up this huge storm of Just a little back. harsh, you know, yeah. a little critical. <laughs> very, I mean, it, very much. He, he truly, and he has stood by that ever since, by the way, which is fascinating. But what happened? Well, the tech community was like, hey, you are basically destroying this company with your one video that you just put out, right? And so he got a lot of pushback there. And then what happened is that his fans and other creators came to his aid and stood by his side and actually said, listen, MKBHD stands for his audience. 
he makes these videos to make sure that you understand whether this is a product that you should buy. And that what he's doing here is doing right by his fans, not by the company, because that's not his job. So there was a lot of pushback, but ultimately people ended up siding with him there. And you know, MKBHD has been reviewing these things for a really, really long time. He has these principles that he talks about. One of those is that 2016 tweet, right? Where he talks about, I think he talks about never making something paid that was free before. I think we'll probably talk about it, that again later. But the other thing that he talks about is never promise saying that you're going to give something to a, a, a purchaser of your product after they've already bought it, right? You never should buy a product based off of what uh, the company has promised you. And so he's got all of these, these reviews, he's got all of these principles, and then comes along the next review, which is iPhone season, like you talked about. He starts it off with that really beautiful, slick intro, and then immediately, about a minute or so in, starts diving into this wallpaper app that he calls Panels. And he says, you know, we've been working on it for a long time, and there's this free version version, and uh, there's also a, a paid subscription as well, and I'm doing this to support the artist, and I've got bigger ideas about what will happen down the line in the future with this app. And the first thing I did, after kind of watching five minutes of, the, of this video and after that ad, was went into the comment section, just kind of curious about what people were thinking. And the first thing that stood out to me was that I don't think I've ever seen a negative comment in this comment section, actually. And so I go in there, and the top one is like, oh, I downloaded this app, and, you know, it was like, a bad experience. It wasn't something that I enjoyed, basically, and it went through their whole process. So that kind of stood out to me. And then I kept scrolling, and you kind of continued to see this. And it, of course, this was in like the first couple of days of it being reviewed. Then I was on threads, and then I was on Twitter. And you start to see that kind of leak out to the broader community. And then just a couple of days ago, just yesterday actually, I was on The Verge, and on these all, the, all these old traditional publishing sites, and they're talking about MKBHD's failure. And so it kind of like blew up in his face, it felt like to me. And from my perspective, like you talked about there's a lot here to unpack that is unique to him yeah. the Pro question is why did this go so crazy for him yes because it's not the first time a creator launched something and the audience wasn't really feeling it yes but it really was extreme in terms of like i keep saying the pushback on him specifically and there's a few reasons why yes um that are unique to marquez brownlee and i think that those are probably what we should talk about next but the the two that come to my mind before i pass it back back to you is number one, that he is a product reviewer and he released a product. So that whole story of him with that old tweet and his humane AI pin review at the beginning of the year, that those are kind of these things that compounded throughout the year that led him to this moment. Very unique, for even, even for him in this regard, right? And the second one is that he's the king of the hill, which I know that you ha are very passionate about and, and how that makes it unique for him. And so I want to kind of hear more about oh, for sure. what, what you say about that. Well, that's literally the first uh, thing I would say. Why this is so unique to him, why it, he's experiencing this chaos unlike anybody else is what Austin just said number one he's a biggest tech creator on YouTube he's the most well respected arguably the most famous I don't know by the numbers I know Linus Tech's tech tips uh, yeah, is also true. pretty big yeah. up there and there's a couple other ones but like Not on his cover. own individually <laughs> he's just like crushing it so yes. you already are a target just like I said in the beginning as a creator that wants to monetize you're already a target but especially him like people are going to go through what he does with a fine tooth comb yeah. and so that is number one two yes go ahead what were you saying well I was going to say actually the thing that stood out to me when I was scrolling through the comment section on the second day was that creators were in on oh him. yeah that was crazy to me. I didn't even get to mention it so not only is he being crushed in the comments like Phil DeFranco would say <laughs> but creators are creating content on him yeah. right and the third one is even traditional publications like the verb yeah. verge are creating articles which leads me to the second thing that's mm. unique about Marquez Brownlee and why he's getting all this negativity his name and his brand is a clickable headline. Mm. You just put it in your title. You're just talking about it, especially if it's something negative. Everybody wants to hear the tea, the <laughs> drama, right? And so he has this, and again, this is not to judge his product or how he released yeah. it. You know, Austin comments on it because he's a fan, he watched it. Yeah. I haven't even watched the whole video, by the way, yeah. right? I'm just talking about, okay, what are the lessons learned and what, why is his situation uh, different? Well, it's because he's a clickable, title for creators and what do creators want to do on YouTube 
get views. Mm -hmm. So if this is a topic of conversation, both in his you know, audience and community, but on the uh, wider web, social media, and you know, like outside of all of that, of course creators are gonna take advantage of it. You know, I love Phil DeFranco, but this is his whole business yeah, model. Yeah. So whenever there's something <laughs> to talk about, he's gonna put you not only in the title mm -hmm. and in his content, even in the thumbnail, put your, your face or whatever. So that is one reason he's getting so much attention for this because he's a big target right he's because, a huge yeah. target but also it gets people views yeah that is the thing because if there was a no-name person that launched a wallpaper app and made you pay fifty dollars <laughs> per year it wouldn't like be that well, the verge is not writing an article about exactly that. Yeah. right the verge isn't like caring about his character's yeah. integrity they're just trying to use whatever information is out there and the attention on this situation yeah. to get more traffic to the website period and all these other creators um that would be the second thing but i think the third thing and you kind of started talking about this is he does review products yeah and he's been critical of other products, other brands. And I think an additional part of that third point I'm trying to make, he has said things that are contradictory to his own uh, like statement. So yes. those old tweets saying, hey, never offer a paid <laughs> version of something that can be free. Yeah. Um, you know, he's all obviously uh, talk smack. You know, when I say talk smack, he's reviewing um, other people's products, dude. When you do that, you're also a target to them because they just want revenge. <laughs> now this is what's interesting. That is complete speculation. Um, and I don't know anybody that's actually doing it. I just know how people are. And guess what? If there's just one person that puts it in the comments, people like stacking on it, right? They, they, there's trolls out there. There's people that are so negative about life. They just like getting into all that drama and kind of getting behind this conversation, especially when, you know, somebody as successful as Marquez Brownlee that is looked at as this perfect creator. Anytime you can mm -hmm. drag them down. So I already told you the nature of people that aren't doing it themselves they're like crabs in the pot right they're trying to pull the crab down yeah. he's a crab right now that like super strong super beautiful i don't know why i'm using these words for my kids right like he did just win that uh, frisbee uh like yeah, championship talented, in yeah. australia right point is this he's super successful as a youtube creator so any opportunity to kind of bring him down to your level and this could be just a no-name troll that doesn't do um, uh, YouTube, doesn't have their own content. And it could also be somebody that's secretly like maybe in the industry yeah. that just wants to shit on them because there are people like that are just going to do everything. So just put those three together. These are all unique to him. He's the top of the hill, right? King of tech content. Number two, he is a clickable title. So he's already somebody that people want to report on. And if there's any kind of drama, it makes it easier for those people, creators and channels, as well as you know traditional publications to get views. And then third, he has reviewed other products, brands and companies critically. So guess what? Even yeah. people that aren't those products or businesses, if they get an opportunity to critique him, <laughs> they are. And I haven't even talked about his actual product, my judgment, that doesn't matter. But yeah. right now the consensus is it's not worth the money. Yeah. Is that true? Is it not true? It's actually more for Austin <laughs> to speak on, but that's actually my quick take about why Marquez Brownlee is so uniquely getting taken down yeah. and people are really um, upset with the way he did it. How he launched it and the actual product, that's a whole nother discussion, which actually you can find so many videos <laughs> yeah, on this so topic. True. Yeah. That's not the point of this yeah. video. The point is this. There's a lot of lessons that creators can learn. Um, but I'm just curious, anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the big one is kind of what you were landing on there, which is that the, the, the perception of the community actually is what I noticed. Um, first of all, right, like the comment section was there before the Verge article was, right? And without the comment section, you probably don't get the Verge article, right? If you don't have the Twitter, uh, the, if you don't have the tweets and you don't have the, the thread posts, you don't have the Verge article, right? And and so I, I guess the, the, the interesting piece of that to me is that the consensus that I saw, and actually also in my own, because I downloaded the app too, actually, and I kind of went through it, and it's like, it looks like it was, you know, sort of thrown together. That was the feeling that I think a lot of the community got. And I guess I'm wondering if that has 
that is a piece of what like other creators can learn about it. Cause I'm I, obviously, you know, like, like I said, I'm tuned in with what's happening with MKBHD because that's kind of the space that I'm in. But you've been around the block when it comes to YouTube and monetization for way longer than I have. Well, to that point, the one thing I would quickly interject on yeah, is yeah. this. He might have endangered the trust of his audience mm. by, if he did do this, throw this together and then slap it on his number one viewed, uh, you know, tent pole event, which is iPhone release. Yeah. That to me seems a little sketchy. And this is just from someone that doesn't know him very well and uh, doesn't watch his content regularly. I can imagine a, cre a, a viewer that's a fan of his thinking, huh, this seems yeah, yeah. a little fishy. Yeah. And on top of the fact that I don't like the product or I have to pay for the premium, I'm just not for it. And that yes. is the cardinal rule of creators, which kind of leads into like- Yeah, that's what, what I want to hear more about. Best Here. practices, right? Never endanger the trust that you have with your audience, mm. okay? That relationship is something, in, in his case, was built yeah, over the course of, I don't know, 15 years yeah, at least? I think at least, yeah. Okay, so that's, that's one. Powerful, that's yeah. definitely one thing uh, a creator can understand. If that was the case, if he just kind of slapped it together. Now, yeah. he probably was working on the app oh, for a yeah. long time or whatever. Um, but even the fact that he made all these comments and tweets yes. in the past and he's being a hypocrite exactly. about it, that's not good. That's kind of what I was going to get at too. And, and I think that we're on the same page here because you're, you're totally right. That's a really profound piece that his audience, again, I'm an audience member yeah. and it's kind of below the quality of what I would expect for an MKBHD product that he's reviewing or even an MKBHD video, yeah. right? And so to open up the app and be sort of let down and then be expected to sort of like watch ads to download things or to pay, it's kind of like a slap in the face as, as one of yeah. his fans. And so I think that maybe that is kind of what the, it, I think that that captures the sentiment of what I was seeing. For there. sure. I think that's a, the, a, another thing too is the second point that creators can learn from when you're considering offering something getting a sponsorship right launching a product is this going to be good for your general community we're not mm. talking about like the random person that stumbles on your video right but this is a person that's either a subscriber or is about to become a subscriber not the core audience not your hardcore super fans is this something that they would like because you don't want to give those people that are already skeptical, that are already gonna question, like I said, leave a negative comment no matter what, any kind of ammo to call you out. So <laughs> yeah. when you're doing this, I think it's just smart to do that, like in a public you know, um, announcement to think about like, is this good for your yeah. audience? And actually it makes me think about Marquez Rowley and how he started. Famous first video oh, yeah. is him as a young kid reviewing, <laughs> I think like a laptop, yeah, yeah. like accessory. I think it was a remote actually yeah, for, yeah, his for, for his yeah. laptop. Yeah, yeah. And when I think about that fan, a young kid mm. that's into tech, that probably didn't have a lot of money yeah. at the time, I'm yeah. just assuming this, to like be offered this free thing, but then there's this $50 version. That average person, because even me, when I think about wallpaper, uh, wallpapers, I, I, I already have a whole bunch of free ones yeah, on my phone, right? Yeah, yeah. If I wanted something different, I would just take a picture and use it. So like to go that extra mile for like a niche product for like a very exclusive audience, it just doesn't seem like there's a lot of alignment. Yeah. So that's what I would say. He says how a lot of people have asked me online, you know, I know that people pay for wallpapers, so I want to offer my own thing. When you think about his general community, it just wasn't a lot of alignment yeah. and you're giving ammo to those people. Yes. Um, even if he had the best intentions to offer a quality product, which again, I'm not here to judge yeah. the product, right? But if the product isn't of quality, then those people that would buy, that would spend money, then they're gonna piggyback on all the other judgments. So I'd say that's the second thing. The, qual the alignment with your general community yeah. is really important. The third thing, I would say is, say you, you take all that into consideration, right? Um, uh, is it, are you willing to, you know, get a little bit of feedback, get some negativity, you know, because people always question anytime you want to make money. Yeah. Two, are you um, protecting the trust that you have with your audience, not doing anything shady? Three, is there alignment, right? But even after all that, say you still want to do it, is it even worth <laughs> your time? Yeah. 
at the risk of something like this happening. Yeah. Now I told you Marquez Brownlee is unique and he's not only the king of the hill, he's a huge target and he's kind of putting himself out there by critiquing other people. But every creator, even if you have a small audience, is it worth the mental toll that you get? Let's be real, any creator knows you can have a hundred positive comments and those one or two ones really just eat at you. I think in some cases in a good way, in a lot of cases in a bad way. What I mean is like sometimes you can take it and it's like constructive criticism. But when you do something like this for money, I told you it's already uh, something that people don't like because they like free. Man, is it worth the stress? Yeah. Um, is it worth you having to read those comments? Especially as a creative person, right? Like exactly. That's such a tricky piece of it. You have is to that... protect your bandwidth. Yes, the that's the very thing true. is, and I'll use another example. I always use my wife because she's the one that got me into YouTube. She has been creating since 2008. She started doing daily uploads in 2011. She's been uploading five to seven five to seven videos a week for 13 years now. We just went to four uh, videos a week, right? So she's like taking a little break. And how she's been able to do that, her and myself and the team around us protect her creative mm. superpower yes. by making sure she uh, has as much peace in her day, in her thoughts as possible. So think about this. I think a good example is Mr. Beast. I don't want to get into that discussion, <laughs> but he's dealing with a lot of cancellation, a, a lot of negative press, and just like some really bad, you know, um, uh, like commentary, both through comments and content, that's definitely not going to be good for his creativity. Yeah. So. When you're releasing a product, are you going to do a sponsorship? You always have to be very critical of yourself. Is this worth it if it doesn't go the way I want it? Almost always, it's not worth it. And so the quick, 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 <laughs> quick advice I have for anybody, the big lesson is you always have to overanalyze, right? Overthink any kind of monetization that you do on YouTube, especially when it's different than anything you've done in the past. Because even with my wife, when we started in 2008 and we waited till 2010, not by choice, obviously we had to get approved. Even when we started running ads <laughs> and doing those simple little brand sponsorships, people didn't like it. So like in That's this incredible. case, when there's uh, the, the trust has been broken, the alignment isn't there with the general audience, right? And three, you know, we kind of talked about this, you're paying for something you can get for free. So it's, it's a super niche, super exclusive. You have to ask yourself, is this worth you losing that creative piece and potentially ruining your whole process of creating content, I almost always say definitely not because the name of the game of being a creator is creating content. Mm. And even though we all gotta pay bills, we, always, we all wanna make more money and be successful, if you're not creating content, then you're definitely not making money. And so I think in some cases, and this might be one of those, shout out to Marquezo, the way he's handling it I think is very respectable and we'll see how he navigates it. But I wouldn't be surprised if he's sitting there sometimes like, man, is this all worth it to give people premium wallpapers? Yeah. I don't think it is. Any last thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think you nailed it, is that, you know, uh, the real profound thing is that when you're overthinking it, that you have your audience first and fo foremost, mm -hmm. right? And that, guess what? The thing that they came to you for, which is your content and your videos, is the thing that they are there to watch and that you need to prioritize over everything else. And that's what I'm gonna take away from this conversation. 100%. Okay, guys, hey, the last video, you guys left some amazing comments saying, hey, video influencers back. <laughs> you know, I've actually been creating content this whole time. I just stopped uploading to this channel. So I loved hearing your guys' comments. Let me know down below, what year did you start watching video influencers mm -hmm. when me and Sean were interviewing creators and starting this whole journey to writing YouTube secrets? And tell me, what kind of topics do you want us to cover? So if you don't know Austin Haw, he was one of my original OG videographers back <laughs> in the day, now a creator himself. So he's working with me um, to help you guys out on this channel. So yeah, just leave it down below and I'll talk to you guys later. And if you're new to this channel, subscribe.